be here. This is my f like very first uh, in BSD conference. Yeah, this is my very very first time, and thank you for this opportunity to present this one. So uh, here's the ag agenda. Uh, I will talk about like the like a recent contribution that uh, free uh, free BSD Foundation with Microsoft, uh, and also about like uh, what kind of like Azure ecos uh, Azure ecosystem engagement. And second, uh, and then I will uh, mention those contributors. Uh, and uh, so you have a better idea like uh, who in Microsoft is working on FreeBSD. And then so I will talk about the, that's the, that's the main topic today uh, is about the, the project we are trying to do. Uh, it's a prototype right now uh, to let you to do the CI pipeline uh, with your own setup. Uh, not without um, using like uh, drinking CI or some other things. And it's all, uh, all around like Azure ecosystem. So yeah, I add these slides yesterday because I think it's very good to explain terminologies uh, beforehand because like uh, you know, like internal meeting, uh, we always do something like ADO and then I, I think in a public conference that people won't have uh, like a, uh, like a uh, knowledge like uh, what ADO is. So when I, if I, I try to always say Azure DevOps today, but yeah, but if I, as I mentioned, ADO, that means Azure DevOps. So it's a, uh, so just a quick survey here. So any one of you ever use uh, Azure DevOps? I see few hands, <laughs> very few hands, yeah. Yeah, so normally I don't have to ask this question, of, of course, inside Microsoft. So uh, to, for your better context, a, uh, Azure DevOps is a, is a platform to provide like a, like a one-stop uh, website, uh, web services uh, provide you for like a project management, co-hosting like GitHub, and also like a like a CI, like a Jenkins CI or just a Travis CI, those kind of thing, and also including auto uh, all, um, like auto deployment, it includes like uh, every service you need for building uh, your applications. And then it was called Visual Studio Team Service before, so also called VSTS, if that ring the bell. And then. When I mention build pipeline, that means uh, continuous integration. So it's just uh, uh, like a normal integration, but in, in there we, we call it build type pipeline. So if I essentially mention this again, uh, it's, build pi uh, it's a CI basically, and release pipeline, that, that's how we call uh, continuous delivery uh, inside ADO concept. Okay, yeah, I just say ADO again. Okay, so. Uh, here's my introduction. So uh, I'm Colin. I'm from Microsoft Azure Linux Community Engineering. I know it's weird to see a term Linux uh, uh, like happening here, but this is what it is. Because uh, if any one of you is using Azure, you, you know, like uh, uh, when you are using free BSD on Azure, you had to uh, kind of assign it as a Linux because uh, we use Linux this term to. Uh, uh, to uh, to be like any like a Unix like system because a lot of infrastructure is actually shared inside uh, Azure ecosystem. Yeah, we there's a space to improve, uh, so that's why uh, I'm here to to uh, to uh, s uh, to provide an update like uh, how we improve recently and then uh, how we can do better. So uh, thanks for Lee Wen. So uh, Lee Wen. Uh, uh, came to me and provide this opportunity, says, uh, oh, okay, we have something. Uh, we are doing, really doing activity. So I would, it start with like a pause, like I pause uh, on, on, the, on my Facebook about like, since I joined uh, community engineering this year, starting this year, so I want to, we, our target is like, try to reverse the, we are not just, okay, uh, we're doing a product and then let the open source community just come to say uh, doing their work to just try to adapt the product like uh, just like other cloud. So we, we want to do it reversely. We want to stand uh, into a perspective of a community. So we want to thinking uh, if we are the like an open source community contributor, what we do and then just by the chance, if there's really somewhere we can leverage Microsoft resources, then we do over there. So uh, so yes, uh, since again, uh, Lee will mention this one. Uh, he, he saw the pause, 
they came to me, oh, we have a, we have an opportunity to do in this one because we are currently actively working on Azure stuff with uh, CI. So yeah, that's kind of like my, my trends because uh, in the past, uh, starting Microsoft, I start like my first five years in Microsoft in Bing team, so which is like a Bing core team uh, is about like index, index serving pipeline uh, in, in Bing. So it's like a, from the index file on the machine and then try to retrieve those index file and then just present to uh, your search, like a your default search result. And then uh, when I was there, I was doing a lot of like test, integ uh, test integration, CI integration, try to improve the inner loop and like uh, even optimize the compiler settings to be able to make our uh, pro uh, production more efficient, like uh, make, it, make it run time run faster. So we're doing a lot of like uh, CI integration over there, um, like uh, with a lot of tasks over there. And then uh, those CI pipeline, it take a week to, to finish your running. So like when you start a CI and even without like a manual uh, interv uh, interfere, uh, it, it still required a week to finish because there's a lot of tests uh, in inside there to be able to run some tests. Uh, last like a, uh, like a few hours, some tests last like seven days to be able to finish running. So yeah, so when I see this topic, oh, this is a very good thing that I can contribute to uh, FreeBSD community. And also, uh, there's a multiple people inside uh, Microsoft is also work, uh, contributing to FreeBSD ecosystem. So uh, Sandeep is the PM from Azure Community Gary. So we had a talk, we, we met at Open Source Summit Yet I met uh, my colleague in Open Source Summit, so so we, we figure out oh we are actually uh, have a have a lot of things we can do uh, for FreeBSD uh, community. So yeah, we think uh, that's uh, something we do. So uh, he's working uh, he's working on from uh, Azure Community Gary perspective. So if anything uh, in the future you encounter anything uh, in Community Gary, you can contact Sandeep or you can contact me. I can I can reach out Sandeep about about like Community Gary opportunities. And so Deb from uh, 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 Azure LSG team. Yeah, again, it's a, it's a different Linux thing inside Microsoft, but things like uh, right now, uh, uh, Linux system thing, uh, they are usually working on Unix-like system, so uh, we do have some work over there. And also Wei Hu uh, from uh, Microsoft Shanghai, um, he's actively working on, I think probably in this room, there's already a uh, few people working with Wei Hu before. So he, uh, he's working on more hardware stuff on FreeBSD. Uh, like some Hyper-V stuff. Okay, so uh, I do a lot of test automation uh, when I uh, when I do uh, uh, with ADO, of course, because inside Microsoft we have to use that, and it's really a convenient system. So uh, uh, I will talk about that later. So before come to this meeting, I was trying to find my connection uh, to free business, uh, uh because it was like a. Kind of like a decade ago, I started using uh, FreeBSD a long time ago. So here's what I found. This is my first visa, visa later. <laughs> so uh, this is my, my photo on my first visa. So actually, the, uh, I'm wearing um, FreeBSD logo shirts on that. Uh, I didn't bring that passport today, but <laughs> this is the connection I found. But yesterday, uh, uh, after the last talk about uh, BSD, I found another connection. Is I'm wearing a green converse. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm probably the one, uh, the only one wearing a green canvas in this room. <laughs> yes. So yeah, good. <laughs> Find another connection. So yeah, I was going to put, uh, I was going to put this on the slide, but that's too much. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I started using uh, FreeBSD uh, in my first year in the university. Uh, I was in, uh, I was in Taiwan. So I studied in uh, National Jinju University. Uh, I studied. In as a medical sciences. In that department, all of our server is FreeBSD server. So I spend a lot of time working on that because uh, I'm always connecting to FreeBSD server. So this is probably the first unit system I learned how to use. I know uh, it's probably not the first time I use unit like system, but I remember like in my sixth grade, uh, when I was in elementary school, I received a live CD from Red Hat. So it's a it's kind of like a Chinese translated for the book. So introducing Linux and they use Red Hat. Uh, so they, they provide a CD with the Red Hat icon on it. And I just, uh, I just, I was always using Windows, but so I just 
try to turn it on. They said, oh, here's another Windows without games. And then I just turn it off. So I don't re really actually get on, the <laughs> get on this system. So FreeBS is really like when I joined university and starting, uh, because we have a lot of computation to do, like we, we need to use, uh, uh, it, there's a, uh, it's called Octave. It's, a, it's another, because we are in mathematical science, we have a lot of computation to do. And we were using a Lin, uh, the Unix version of uh, MATLAB. I'm not sure whether you know that. It's, a, it's a, like a more math software to be able to calculate other things. So we always need a server. So we, uh, we uh, assisting to some server to do something over there. Yeah, and then uh, also we write a lot of Python program. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's my connection. And then there's a lot more like ongoing collaboration from Microsoft. So uh, if you are working on FreeBSD, you might heard uh, one of them. So like they were publishing the FreeBSD official images on um, Azure Marketplace. So right now on um, Azure, if you want to use FreeBSD, it's just simply as like you just go to Marketplace and then you will find uh, FreeBSD image, like official image on the FreeBSD Foundation uh, as a publisher. So they do, uh, they do publish uh, FreeBSD official images so you can actually one click to click uh, to create a, a FreeBSD virtual machine over there on Azure. And then there's a, a lot of different uh, effort like uh, uh, Sardip was working on Hypercore feature and ARM64 support on Azure. I think this is like a, uh, uh, like a, the recent topic like uh, uh, Azure is introducing uh, ARM64 machines on there. So you can have that, that kind of machine, uh, machine type if your program is running on ARM. So the FreeBSD is also uh, supporting there. And then there's like Azure video, uh, V6 VM SKU support and then Okay, and then and then uh, FreeBSD Hyper-V support, and then yesterday uh, Foundation update they uh, they say like some, there's something going on done it, uh, that's it, and then to, uh, about today is about the community edition of ADO's uh, pipeline integration that that will be today's topic. Okay, so here's the the project uh, is FreeBSD side pipeline on Azure. So I will introduce what I mean uh, and why, why do we need this? Okay, so the project goal here uh, is try to, we try to automate the, the steps that you need to build an OS image. So today's topic we will always focus on. It's not about like auto servicing uh, in FreeBSD, it will focus on the FreeBSD OS image, especially on Azure one. So we, we want to automate the procedure to build and run the test, and then uh, try to have uh, some place to be able to, uh, this or your like OS image build snapshot over there, like a one, one single place so you can see all of the version you are building over there. And then also the second thing would be most important topic uh, in today's uh, in today's talk is is it's not for like uh, introducing an, another CI here for everybody to go to different places to see your view or this is just another opportunity. It's actually about uh, to provide a template that everybody can use. So if your company is using FreeBSD right now, or you use uh, use it earlier even before Office Image release. Uh, you will have to do your custom image. So uh, this talk today, we try to set out a standard that you can use because it will be migratable. It be actually it will be. I will introduce a little bit later, but uh, it will be just a single file. You just need to migrate into your repository, and then you will you will be able to set it up uh, in, in your uh, Azure subscription, and then you will be able to run your OS image CI pipeline over there. We saw any. Uh, like an extra ever. You don't have to set up a standalone CI server. You don't have to like set up a lot of things. All, all the things on Azure Cloud. So uh, before going next, because yeah, Microsoft Azure paid me to be here. So I feel like this this slide can be improved. So here we go. So I will just keep mentioning. <laughs> I will highlight all the Azure work here. So. Yeah, so uh, this talk will be heavily uh, 
like uh, depend on Azure. So, but it can be any cloud uh, you like uh, after you publish your image. I mean, uh, the image, uh, always image variant could be in different cloud. But just uh, our main focus is like a, uh, to show a streamline uh, prototype uh, running on Azure. So uh, like how you can achieve all those kind of thing on Azure ecosystem. So why in this stage uh, FreeBSD would need this? The first is, so recently uh, we do have a mirror like a FreeBSD SRC on GitHub right now. So uh, I asked Lee Wen, like what's the, our initiative in, in the beginning, we want to have a GitHub here. So actually the GitHub right now, uh, it do, you can create pull requests over there, but you, it doesn't merge. But it's still the good way to receive patch. So because there's a multiple way we can receive patch for um, OS image, but and and so uh, for free BSD SRC, uh, but like uh, this is a more modern way right now in the community, especially if you want to have a more new blast into the, this community, we we need to like adapt the, the, the better way, like another better way, the more modern way, so a lot of people can because they used to they probably use GitHub a lot in different projects. So if there's a, a way that they can work on free BSD the same way, that would be that would be better. So it's a good way to optim patches, and also uh, it's a good way to do a review. So uh, uh, Azure DevOps integration can can happen on GitHub. We will see uh, look into detail of, uh, on that in later slides, and then it simplify yeah integration with Azure Cloud C ecosystem, which is like a, if you need to set up a lot of things on Azure Cloud, like you need to start an Azure VM in your pipeline. Uh, it doesn't require you to do a lot of like a credential work, a lot of things because on ADO it's, support, it's supported natively. So it's just like you just need to tell me like which subscription you want you want to go and then it will automate in the task, like an Azure related task, it will automatic authentic, uh, authenticate your task to be able to access your resources on the Azure cloud. And then also, one more thing is Azure actually supports all free BSD tier one architectures, but which is actually just MD64 or ARM64 right now, but it supports more imaging in the future. So right now uh, for OS imaging testing, like if your OS imaging is going to be on these two infrastructure, uh, these two architectures, you can test it all on Azure Cloud, uh, just, uh, just without we start setting a different kind of machine over there to be able to test it. You can just, uh, it's scalable. You can, you, can, you can actually have a many instance running and then test your OS image over there. So uh, here's a few slides I tried to add after I talked to several folks uh, in this room. And then I think we, uh, there's already CI uh, freebsd.org here. So, I actually doesn't know the answer of the difference between uh, this and CI FreeBSD.org because in the past I didn't involve into any development of uh, uh, FreeBSD OS image, but it is a good thing is we can right now it's a AI era so like we can do this, so I tried to do this yesterday to do my homework. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, uh, ChatGPT, like a uh, clear mention, like a CI FreeBSD is a Jenkins best a solution, and I know what Jenkins is. So this, here's a, some, like a difference between CI FreeBSD.org and Azure DevOps. So the first thing is the triggering mechanism right now is designed differently. So um, as far as I know, CI FreeBSD.org right now, it runs on specific branches on, and or it's a schedule, so it's like um, every few hours, so like it will run a, a task to build an OS image. And Azure DevOps would be more like on-demand requests, like a pull request, every pull request or a different branch you want to request a, like a build, it's just one click away and then you just one click there, you can request an OS image build immediately from, from your uh, pull request and you will see the status update over there. And second is a built environment infrastructure. So as I say, if you are 
uh, running your CI system, uh, usually you require setup. You need to provide a server inside your data center or something. You need to have a data game machine to do it. And Azure DevOps, we are more like uh, using cloud instance to, to do a run the test. So it first is uh, capable of migration. As I say, you can migrate these things uh, into, you can actually set up uh, this thing in, in your ecosystem, in your, in your system, like your cluster uh, with just uh, one file. You just copy one file over and then just modify a few settings, like two or three, and then you will, you will start the, uh, you, you will build a, like a, this pipeline, like a build pipeline set up uh, with all your things, like your subscription, your interns, your, your agent account. And then it could be adjusted anytime because uh, it will be all cloud instances. So like a free BSD is always image. So it's not like a, some like a small web server. So it build only takes like a few five to 10 minutes. So it require, so for example, I'm using a 32 cores CPU machine, 32 RAM, uh, 32 gigabytes RAM to build the OS image. It re still require, if you are building from the scratch, it still require an hour to build it. So uh, in this, kind of context, uh, this machine can be adjustable. Like if there's uh, like a, if in the future that it's being used more and more or in your company, like uh, you use this kind of building a lot, you can adjust the machine spec anytime. You just need to like a, kind of like a turn off your VM and then you can change the size of your VM and turn it back on. And your, your builder instance will be, it will be even larger later on after the uh, job by job. And you can even provide the pool of a builder. So uh, it will just automatically allocate the tasks into different builder according to the tech you are, you are, you are doing. So for example, if you are trying to build uh, uh, always image with some compiler optimization, you, you like optimizing, when, usually when you turn on optimization in compiler settings, uh, it will take an even longer time, so uh, you can adjust the. You can just apply different tech to, to to get more powerful machine to be there. And then third is about testing and deploy automatic. So testing and deployment automation here for one for the testing, the CI freebsd.org will be for more focused on like a freebsd feature itself. Um, on Azure DevOps, the pipeline we are introducing today, it will more focus on the releasing to the cloud. So it will be. Uh, mainly focus on the like a cloud compatibility stuff. So you make sure before you, because you you always have a destination over there. So you can use this uh, pipeline to test the, those compatibility issues before that. So like for example, uh, uh, when Wei it was testing about ARM64, he always had to like a manual to build ARM64 uh, like a separate maybe in your local computer to verify the Azure capability, but uh, he need to always go through like a lot of manual step uh, to put that image, publish that image onto Azure, his Azure account, and then to start a VM and test a lot of things. But this can be done with Azure easily, uh, with Azure integration. So it will be fully automatic. So start uh, this pipeline inside there, uh, there will be ARM64 uh, server over there. So you will know when you publish this OS image, when you start a Azure virtual machine, you wouldn't have problem there because you test it beforehand. Okay, so uh, here's like a very, very simplified architecture overview of this FreeBSD site pipeline uh, because the source code hosting is on GitHub. So actually there was two options to uh, run the CI pipeline on GitHub. Uh, one is called GitHub Actions, uh, probably uh, more familiar with by anyone using using GitHub. But that one unfortunately doesn't support free BSD scenario right now. And, but Azure DevOps, uh, it can support this free BSD scenario. So, uh, uh, and we do have integration. Uh, like uh, I noticed this one because it was like uh, right after acquisition of uh, GitHub uh, by Microsoft before. When they, the, when they acquisition down like in the first like one or two years, they are doing this kind of integration to integration uh, Azure DevOps service. So at the time we, we know there's a, like a, a pipeline support from GitHub. So like in GitHub report request, you can actually trigger Azure DevOps, uh, DevOps pipeline over there. 
So uh, normally you won't be able to see because you, it will be more internal stuff because Azure DevOps pipeline usually is not public facing. It usually is like a belong to some organization. So you only get to see those pipeline uh, in GitHub project if that's an uh, internal project. So you won't be a, uh, you will be able to see easily on uh, like a public project. But actually, uh, if you are uh, an open source project, uh, when you have a binding like a, with your MS account, when you have a binding uh, on ADO, uh, it will give you an option that like you, you will have a form. You can just fill it out to apply like, a, uh, I think they provide one free instance, like a auto, uh, like a, the builder. And that one doesn't support free, free BSD yet, but uh, they will provide one builder resources over there for free, but it's a very small instance, probably with only two gigabytes RAM, uh, which is not very efficient uh, for building an OS, uh, like OS image like this. But if you are building other projects, you can definitely that opportunities. Now you can uh, actually apply one free instance, so you can have Azure DevOps pipeline to run for your uh, like a public repository on GitHub. And uh, the release destination will be Azure Community Gallery. So that's like a, uh, like a repository to host your snapshot of OS image. And then we will talk about that later. Okay, so, um, so this is about, uh, this is introduction to Azure DevOps pipeline. So somebody uh, never use it, I think it's kind of like 90% of uh, people in this room. So it will be starting with a simple configuration file. It's called Azure, it's always called Azure type, uh, pipeline.yaml file. It's in YAML format. So uh, I just put it here so, so uh, you can have uh, some concept uh, about this file. It will be a YAML file. You can define like where your machine run and then what's the step. So step by step, like a list of script task. And then you can just put it like a, like this one, so to define your 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 jobs uh, when you are trying to use a CI pipeline. And then, uh, so this is why it's migratable because uh, it, you just need to copy file into your repository. And then uh, when you are trying to uh, build it in Azure DevOps, it will be. Uh, it will be available for you. You will run all the tasks, uh, all the tasks for you, and then you will target your your machine pool. And then, so it actually has a very uh, well designed workflow engine over there, so it can handle a lot of complicated, uh, complicated, nasty uh, tasks. So you can have a a lot of tasks there, and then tr uh, try to uh, fetch information from the different tasks. And also, in the between, you can actually swap out like a two, like. A, uh, for example, if you are doing some uh, tooling, like uh, you might want to test other services as well, working with your virtu virtual machine, and which is not really best, you can swap out the, the middle task uh, to run on different kind of machine, like a Linux machine or something, and then test it, and then uh, aggregate the result in, in the end. And then the most important thing is it supports self-hosted agents, so you can actually provide instance by, uh, by yourself. So, so you can run uh, those tests. That's how we can achieve like FreeBSD instance by uh, just hosting uh, self -ho hosting self hosting agents on our uh, Azure subscription. So, <coughs> so the self hosting agent is actually based uh, based on this repository. It's called Microsoft Azure Pipelines Agents on GitHub. So it's actually open source. And then we just operate this agent on a FreeBSD virtual machine on Azure. So to be able to provide the builder resources for FreeBSD. But I want to mention one thing is the self-hosting agent is actually not officially supported by Microsoft so far. So this is actually an ongoing collaboration uh, within the community, which is uh, this pull request I I attach in, uh, on the bottom of these slides is it's called adjustment for FreeBSD. Uh, that's a contributor, J um, uh, operator. I'm not sure whether you're here, but <laughs> because it's on, on the internet, it's always like an ID to us. And then uh, this pull request uh, starting like uh, three years ago, and uh, Microsoft never merged it because uh, there's always uh, we need some business justification uh, to to merge this kind of uh, 
the request to support the FreeBSD ecosystem. And then we are using the instance uh, from this pull request at this time and try to build this build, build this um, Azure pipeline support. So yeah, thanks for the contributor. In, in, there's a, a lot of ongoing discussion inside this right yet. So, but uh, it provides all the like a uh, setup, uh, FreeBSD request setup steps and in there to set up an agent is pretty straightforward. So uh, yeah, so I, uh, this is uh, the one point is not officially supported yet, but right now uh, we can uh, do it from the community because it's kind of like open source. So, <coughs> so here's thing, how we build the uh, uh, FreeBSD OS image on Azure. So first we need to create OS image like we build from FreeBSD SRC, and then we need to use the script to set it up as an Azure instance. So it mark the OS image as an Azure one, but actually it's, it, it works the same. We don't, we don't have to mark it to be able to run Azure, but it's better we, we mark it this way. And then we upload this OS image to a shared image gallery in Azure. So we can see in the subscription. And then we will utilize the Azure VM as a testing environment uh, using that published image. That will be, this will be the procedure. So after you have the integration to Azure DevOps Pipeline, uh, you will see like uh, this is uh, this is like uh, the prototype repository. So it, this is just uh, simply f the fork of a FreeBSD SRC under my account. So so that shows the like a uh, possibility we don't have to set up anywhere. I just need to copy to my account and then I can have an integration like this. So. Yeah, the screen is too small, I know, because I expect, originally I expect the canvas would be like a, at least this window, so I put it, <laughs> I put it like this. I'm sorry about that, but yeah, you can see there's a, actually a green, like check mark here. Oh, I can point it. Yeah, the the green check mark over here. So, uh, when you when you have uh, the Azure DevOps pipeline set up here, every commit on your commit history in your GitHub will show the the result over here, so you have a better idea like when the build breaks, so you can trace back into the trace, uh, trace back to the the right revision to be able to fix your bug over there. That's pretty important for like, especially a repository with a lot of different contributors. Sometimes we break the uh, we we checking and then and then we don't know it breaks. And then, but also with that with this one. Even before the pull request, when you submit the pull request, that there will be a checking get over there. So it will guide, uh, it will guide your your repository to be uh, free of like a, this this build break if it's configured correctly and testing out all the other things over there. But at least the build break is is very easy to detect because the build breaks it breaks, so you won't you won't be able to build, so you won't be able to proceed without it. The harder part will be in testing, and then also it will have a better like a uh, uh, summarized overview of all the all the tests or all the build tasks running over here. So it will tell you like a, also it tell you like a, like a what's the duration of this text like a, this one. It's a main. It takes like a forty five minutes and tell you like a, on which steps like a. This one takes three minutes. This one takes like a 23 minutes, and the publishing take like a 70 minutes to, to be uh, to uh, for you to have a better idea like uh, what uh, was the what what happened over there. So this is the when you click the detail, it will bring you to Azure DevOps. So for this one, this is uh, somewhere different. Like uh, you need to have the access, the permission to enter this this project, so you pro it's probably um, probably got it by your subscription. So you need to be in the subscription to be able to see this page. So it provide you ac the actual like uh, the actual instance inside ADO like of your build jobs. So as you can see, like uh, this is all the job uh, building on FreeBSD SRC, and then it will queue the request over there. So so. You can also request a new run over here, so you can actually uh, run if you have more setting config inside your uh, custom image view. You can actually uh, 
supply the option over there. There's, there's a, when you click in the wrong pipeline, it will provide you the option over there so you can customize your view if you want to test a different thing because usually when we are, run a, when we are running a CI pipeline, you don't always want to enable full setting on there. But if you know your change is going to uh, affect something, you can provide some, you can uh, setting out some configuration to be optional, like optional task, and then you can configure it to be run over here. So like, a, uh, I, will, I will show you in the face later one, uh, but when you click it into a task, you will see uh, there's a, like a visualization of your jobs. And like a, they will be grouped by the, by the job, and then in the job there's a lot, a lot of tasks. So every step you will be able to see all the log, and the log will be up like a, uh, will be sustained uh, over there. So if you want to go back to see like a, maybe a month ago or my, like two months ago, like a, uh, the view has something over there, you want to check all the settings over there. Uh, usually it's very useful to check about like a compiler settings over there because it shows all the parameter to to your commands. Uh, this is a very good good place to start to investigate like what what happened over there and then what's the result. So, and then also it can be those tests can be uh, e uh, either in like a, you can do it interactively or you can pair it can it can be parallel. And then here's like a, since we support like a multi architecture here, so we actually provide option like this one. So. Uh, I I put this one like a there's an architecture setting over there, so you can actually select the the architecture over there. Uh, it's not all supported yet. This is all the way uh, I pull from the the FreeBSD CI build script. Uh, so there's uh, all the parameter over there. Uh, so I just uh, copy over, but but it's not uh, right now. I'm I'm just making sure the uh, MD64 ARM64 is working. And more thing is depend on like instance, like for example, like PowerPC, we need, we, we probably need, uh, probably it can be built, but we, 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 did, we didn't have like PowerPC instance on Azure, so we, can, we cannot test it there, yeah. So uh, you can, uh, so one more thing to do is like an actually, as I say, it can be, the test can be parallel. So on ADO, you can actually uh, have a, like a, a graph, like a, it will be parallel, like you can build all the, all your tasks, like it can be parallel it executed, so you will have all your tasks um, ran efficiently. And one thing about the testing, because uh, right now you have multi-architecture, you have a different kind of revision, and you have all the tests around there. You probably have 100 tests, 1,000 tests over there. So there will be always a testing metrics. It's just like a cottage product. Like a, you, you need to test all the combination every time to make sure it works. So if you are just validating, uh, like a, if you don't trigger a, like a, the CIBU over there testing on your machine, it will be, you, you would need to like run through all the tests over, over there every, every time and then you need to verify MD64 first. So all, this all requires starting a VM. So it requires you to even you can only get a always image view, you still need to go on Azure and then start a VM instance like this too and run all the tests over there. So for different view, you need to start over once and like another view, you need to start over another once. So this can be all automated in, in Azure DevOps. So all those things, the message is triggered every time when you have a build job over there. And then, um, Azure DevOps provide a aggregation, aggregated uh, like a like a very informative view on your test result, and then uh, this is the only thing I don't have a I don't have a mockup uh, I don't have a screenshot right now, so this is just a mockup uh, from a document. But it gives you a better idea. It's a example of the test result. How would a test result uh, be displayed? So first, like a, right now, the test under a uh, FreeBSD SRC, uh, a lot of like, especially the tests you want to run on when you start a Azure VM, uh, the test result will be aggregated into JUnit, and that one is actually supported by Azure DevOps. Azure DevOps support like a file six uh, test format. So if you have the test result file, you can uh, publish the test result file 
within your Azure uh, pipeline definitions. So t just tell the system where to find those test results, and you will automate. It will automatically create uh, like a show you like a, the like a, if you had different stage, you will display like this one, and it will tell you like a like a what percentage of tests you passed. And then when you click into any stage, like a, you are trying um, you are trying to see, uh, you will tell you like a, a very detail on the task. Like a, if you have a imagine you have a the this is very normal, like like a test is when when you have a service inside Microsoft, and you you want to look into like narrow it down into specific tests or like what failed. You can have a it has a field like a, a field lines over there, so you can see the field one. Even for a successful one, you want to go, you want to go, uh, see you can you still have a filter over there. You can look into specific tests, and then when you click into that, it brings you to the log view over there. So all the error messages, successful message will be will be remain in that place, so you will be able to see like uh, what's the test result over there. You get sometimes and we probably don't trigger error, but we the successful information is still important over there, so you will be able to see logs over there. And uh, so all the all those regressions, like especially uh, sometimes it's uh, performance like issues. You want to aggregate some like a metrics over there to be able to detect those regression. It will be spotted when this test is run automatically every build by build. So you have all the test results over there. So to be able to let you compare the performance data over there. The last step would be publishing the the FreeBSD OS image into Azure Community Gallery. So this is like uh, this is the the interface showing you uh, Community Gallery. So you can see there's a name over there. It's automatically generated. It's over here. So it's actually this OS image are automatically generated uh, by the pipeline. So every time when we it's actually I'm actually not making any change to the uh, FreeBSD SRC, I'm just modifying the pipeline file. So every time when I have a commit getting, it generate one OS snapshot uh, uh, automatically. So like that, I'm just testing file, but it still has like a lot of like OS image generated because it's very easy under this pipeline. So when you have this one, so uh, right now in the pipeline, it actually uh, create a test of VM and then run all the tests, uh, run the tests automatically. But right now, uh, if you are trying to replicate issues, sometimes you might want to go back to see uh, that image you publish. So if you go back to see your image you publish there under your image definition, uh, there's a single, sing, like a single button over here to continue. You just click this one to create a VM out of the image. So it's just one click. So <coughs> there might be some confusion between like uh, marketplace and community gallery. So, what's the difference between these two? The marketplace is a term on Azure, which is like a more like a for official release. So, it's like a FreeBSD Foundation publish uh, FreeBSD EOS image. So, it's a public. It's more like a public distribution of the image, so that you can use. You know, there's a uh, verified source of image you, that you can use. So. Uh, and it might it requires more check because it's, uh, it it will require some compliance uh, with the there's a Azure Marketplace publishing standard. So like like for example like when they were publishing this one into Marketplace from free um, from FreeBSD Foundations, it, there's an additional step. You need to have a certification to make sure this is this image is done right. So to be able to use for for all the all the Azure users. But Compute Gallery is something that uh, is a feature for you if you have an Azure subscription. It's more for you yourself to manage all your OS image over there. So you have a freedom to publish any anything in, inside the gallery that is also not accessible from outside. So it, it will be safe in your uh, repository. And it's more ideal for like internal use or you want to share with some specific like a partner or something. So uh, there's more access control on that. Uh, you can do one is like a public. You can do a community gallery. Also, you can do privately like a direct shared image gallery with a subscription. So you can share with like a uh, like if you have a partner working with you like a different company that you can share, you can use. Uh, we call it our back role based access control. You can give permission for others to be able to use your 
you uh, sh uh, share the image. So this is a very straightforward method. You that you can share your image uh, uh, with your, like a developers, like a maybe FreeBSD developer or or maybe like a, your your project developer, and also with Microsoft if there's a, there's an issue on Azure, then you can just using this one to share my, uh, your image with Microsoft to be able to test out your uh, OS image. Okay, uh, here's today's talk. So I'm, uh, okay, it's actually 10 o'clock. So yeah, but I think we have a long break so uh, I can take questions here. Uh, or, or what? The, what's the last thing? Zero set. I'm not sure about that CI, but I I guess you are comparing about like uh, you GitHub Morpho, you mean GitHub Actions, right? Yes. Yeah, GitHub Action. So, um, so right now the most important thing is um, for example, uh, for example, like. Uh, Azure, Azure pipeline uh, was inside Azure DevOps. So it can be more uh, useful when your project is hosting on, on Azure DevOps. But right now it's hosting on GitHub. So actually it's just two options for you uh, to, to do the CI thing on your GitHub. But one important thing right now here is the GitHub action agent you can also do self-hosting agent, but that agent doesn't support FreeBSD yet. So because the Dynamic support right uh, on, on is not uh, it's not finished yet, so the GitHub action actually cannot be the option here. So that's why you, we use Azure DevOps, and also Azure DevOps has a better integration with the Azure Cloud. So for example, like if you are triggering some Azure op operation with the Azure CLI. So in other CI like GitHub uh, Action, oh, I maybe uh, GitHub Action might do have some integration so far, but but uh, for full feature like uh, all the Azure related stuff, you can expect like uh, you don't have to configure additional things like a credential, those kind of thing. Is all uh, is is being integrated with Azure Azure DevOps for a long time. So all those like uh, Azure CLI tasks uh, can be can be executed uh, seamlessly. You don't have to put extra effort to make it work inside ADO task. Yeah. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. And any other questions? Okay. Thank you. And yeah, feel free to to. Uh, Catch me uh, after this meeting and then to discuss if you have a specific scenario you want to discuss. Yeah. And the, here's my email, and then uh, you can also feel free to send me. And even you want to contact some other guys I mentioned in the first slides. Yeah. And here's my clear, uh, closer view to my shoes. Yeah. <laughs> to make sure it's the same as the Beasties one. Okay. Thank you.